Uh, my paper is called Metaphor Database History Towards a Documentary Research Method for Filmmaker Scholars. Introduction. Theory practice in hybrid film and digital media programs is problematic insofar as theory enters into compromise with practice. To sustain both, a distinction must be drawn between them as well as around their disciplinary contours. Uh, film theory is not the same thing as media practice. Each is an established field, and the gaps between and contradictions within cannot be short-circuited by interdisciplinarity. This essay poses historiographic problems related to academic multimodal interactive and collaborative documentaries, problems that are not new to documentary studies. The question, is history neglected when documentary is left uninterrogated, does not foreclose one field fertilizing findings in another. Rather, an investigation into both theory and praxis, particularly in scenarios dealing with crisis, must work through its own disciplinary histories. This is not to say that there will be no unsettling reconfiguration or reinterpretation, nor that all history is equally important. On the contrary, concerns of the past will percolate up in the eye of the present and on the basis of their necessity. What artist scholars cannot do if they are to avoid the trap of blind repetition is to abnegate the task of history today. Artist scholars must alternatively wear, in other words, two hats, that of the artist and of the critic. First section, research or documentary. The article by Borish et al. called Moving Images, Moving Methods, Advancing Documentary Film for Qualitative Research asks how documentary film might enlarge the scope of their qualitative research on the multimodal project called Herds, Heard Inuit Voices on Carabao. I'm going to share the landing page for the project. Project Heard includes document, documentary to collect, analyze, and disseminate data on the crisis of disappearing Carabao for Inuit culture. While Borish et al. propose a synthesis of storytelling outputs with a qualitative data approach, both elements are not equal. Instead, documentary film is pitched as the key methodological strategy for research, a means rather than an end. Documentary supports the analysis that not only what participants I should say rather, documentary supports the analysis, not only what participants are saying, but how they are saying it and in what context. At the same time, it embraces the activist indigenous oral and visual knowledge sharing practices. These claims serve as two aporias. First, the researchers interchangeably use video and documentary, suggesting they are they, that they insufficiently differentiate media technology, and media practice. Second, by neglecting the aesthetic dimension of documentary, they avoid contradictions between art and activism. Moving Images, the name of the article, is published in a qualitative methods journal. While attempting to expand qualitative analysis theory, the authors neglect disciplinary concerns of documentary studies. This is evident when the authors treat film and video interchangeably by lopping off uh, documentary aesthetics and reducing it to a technical instrument. The authors disregard debates and documentary studies that have been extensively probed just this problem. But without a clear cut sense of history, documentary becomes an unspecified assumption, a catch all that needs no uh, definition. Documentary film and other video based media um, are used to maximize the understanding of qualitative data. Specifically, Borish et al. use video to determine the nuances in participant dialogue and expression. One, one aspect of qualitative analysis is to divest research of preconceived notions and to forego conclusions until material has been collected, coded, and analyzed. Informant interviews are typically conducted, then software used to tag emerging trends and themes. An audio or video recording allows the researcher to identify by tone of voice whether to take the interview subject literally or ironically. That video further allows for the flagging of nervous tics, gestures, et cetera, that might repeat within the broader arc of the study. An entirely new and unexpected phenomenon can emerge with video 
leading to a revised or even entirely new hypothesis. So essentially building upon the fundamentals of qualitative analysis, uh, interview-based qualitative analysis. However, it is not only data and analysis, but in the new possibilities for collaboration and distribution that the, that the authors see in video. Project Herd's video is intended for um, the other researchers and the public, the subjects do not remain anonymous. This, pres this presents certain downsides, such as the lack of anonymity, which for Borish et al. is outweighed by the benefits. Documentary subjects are less liable to be reduced to units for academic analysis in remaining attached to their identity and sense of place. In particular, the researchers took pains to ensure that indigenous peoples are in control of their knowledge. Um, this is Borish et al.'s claim. Here, documentary is not only instrumentalized in the service of qualitative analysis, but in the, na in the name of social justice. Documentary is art. In the last analysis, the creative treatment of actuality. Of course, we all know that from Grierson. Art poses the problem of freedom, of transforming predetermined forms and making them more adequate for use in the present. Activism pulls in the opposite direction. It uses art for political purposes. The art politics contradiction complicates the claims made in moving images. Again, the essay in question. On the one hand, the authors tell us that documentary ensures participant wisdom is prioritized, heard, and seen throughout the project. On the other hand, documentary is used as a tool for deconstructing power relations. Although these two claims appear mutually complementary, documentary study shows how collaboration can align power relations embedded in making a film. That the filmmaker, while retaining control of the project, hides behind a facade of equality and the ruse that the participants are themselves becoming producers. Next section is called Art or Politics. Along the lines of Project Turd, Sharon Daniels' Public Secrets, um, and let me move over to that project, uses a collaborative process in an attempt at producing a collective voice. Her project also engages a marginal community in crisis, a group of female prisoners, through narratives, annotated research, and analysis. Unlike Borish et al., Daniel is not concerned with qualitative methodologies. Instead, documentaries are means of speaking and listening for those who have no part. The subject's documented claims are conceived of as acts of juridical testimony that reveal the scope of the injustice. So you can see here the kind of massing of um, complaints, as it were, um, ought to indicate the extent of the problem. At the same time, it facilitates political subjectivation or reimagining the status quo. Yet for Daniel, art is not political per se, rather its relation to the political must be mediated through the effects of equality that they stage as the distribution of the sensible, which is to say an aesthetic reflection of reality. And that's from Ranciere. Without de-emphasizing her authorial role, Daniel uses the database form to reflect on the viewer's relation to author and subject. Instead of image, we are confronted with the project's interface, which operates as a metaphorical argument, much like writing does for a scholar. It guides the viewer through a path of inquiry. If you click on any of these um, blocks of text, you'll be able to hear the voice of the subject. And, and this reproduces the artist's research process. Daniel's notion of the interface metaphor treats documentary as research aesthetically. Unlike Project Herd, documentary is not a means of capturing reality, but it's technical and aesthetic reconfiguration. This allows for the thematic organization of aporias, unresolvable internal contradictions. Daniel is sanguine about the transformative powers of this imagining. The problem of the real remains manifest in the operations of power which the documentary does not undo. The interface metaphor chronicles the contradictions whose subjectivation is hoped for, yet still imaginary. Rather than simply claiming to empower the subject, Daniel conceives of the documentary as navigating tensions and contradictions that emerge between the goals of theory and aesthetics on the one hand and those of advocacy and activism on the other. The database or IDOC allows her to treat marginalized communities as a collective site rather than an individual telling a story. Uh, in so doing, she does not follow or take for granted documentary conventions, but transforms them. 
For instance, the subjects are not visually, but as you see here, orally represented. If you were to mouse over the blocks of text, you would hear the subject's voice. Further, she admits that collectivity is not an end in and of itself or a, a priori political. Ascension to the level of the political would require organizational form outside of the state. Daniel's conception of documentary research of a community in crisis roughly corresponds with that of Project Heard. It differs in that the subaltern's confrontation with the status quo does not so much preserve knowledge as express a contradiction. This, along with the realistic estimation of political effect, gives public secrets its power. However, although Open Secrets broadens documentary through database forms, it assumes a utopian concept of mediating the collectivity via the digital commons. Art is not, in other words, in contradiction with technology. Both remain sufficient for the task at hand. This assumption is to some extent confirmed by the project's programmer in a Vector's Journal essay. Nevertheless, that the project had tech support raises questions as to whether the process can be reproduced by other artists without the same division of labor or a degree of technical specialization. Further, will Daniel's interface metaphor notion addresses the politics aesthetics contradiction neglected by Project Heard. It does not speak to this contradiction's historical appearance in documentary practice, nor to it being the perennial object of investigation for documentary studies. Moving on to the next section, database or history. Following Daniel, the multimedia project Counterpublic, The Politics of Committed Film in the Philippines, uses documentary in the form of an interface metaphor. The latter is, however, only one component in a larger investigation into the Philippine new cinema, which was in the 1970s and 80s, corresponding to the country's martial law and democratization. The original conception was, as with Borish et al., that this research would organically include both the production of academic and documentary film outputs. Field work was guided by videotaped informant interviews, which built on previous documentary and journalistic work that the author conducted in the Philippines. Um, as with Project Heard, the intent was for the footage to be shared and used by other researchers while doing double duty as a social history. However, it soon became evident that a social history would not accurately portray the extent to which no two counts aligned and that no one had a neutral take on the history. One method of reading these histories against the grain was derived in Steve Anderson's notion of database histories. An alternative to digital historiographies that, instead of historicizing the past, use database and search engine to construct a more flexible, recombinant, and participatory digital archive. Derived from cultural memory studies, this approach considers memory's relation to time and culture as shaped by cinema, television, and digital media, dialectically entangled in history. Cultural memory is a process that leaves a gap between event and representation, giving rise to contradictions between the experience and the representation of a traumatic event that media represses or screens. In other words, you don't have a one-to-one -one relationship between the media and as a document of the past and that past moment that it represents. Um, rather, the media serves the functions you hide, fractures within culture. That's at least the claim. Anderson's idea of database histories also builds on Alan Sekula's materialist cultural histories. For Sekula, a photographic archive's coherence is due to its conditions of ownership and the cash nexus, which both liberates the archive from traditional uses and also abstracts the meaning of the photographs, with it taken out of context, in other words. Um, there's a certain uh, deception in how the archive accurately catalogs the ensemble of photographic reflections in producing an aesthetic of, aesthetics of power, mastery, and control. So the, the power behind the archive seems rather to be hidden under these kind of broader archival claims that are being made. In response, um, Sekula emphasizes photography's reception by ordinary working people. Returning to, returning to the archival image, the antagonism of, of power relations through montage, the kind of um, um, working class reception versus this elite archive, if you will. Unfortunately, Sekula's call for a history of archives from below emphasizes solidarity while de-emphasizing aesthetic experience and the historical contradictions therein. Uh, for the study in question, 
The ideal approach would not be like Sekula's anti-art historicist and concerned with institutional power, of course, he's basing it on Foucault, but an attempt to track the early instances of cultural activism that led to the cultural memory status quo. So what led, what gave rise to the cultural memory in the first place? Here, Claudio's notion of the people power narrative is of use. For Claudio, the co coalitional politics of the 1986 Philippine people power uprising were scarcely characterized by ide ideology or solid organization. He instead argues for a historical account of the contradiction between nationalism and hegemonic political coalition, presuming that protest cinema, the mass media entangled, protest cinema and the mass media, I should say, entangled concepts of the nation with official discourses and individual memories. The end product, which is kind of, I guess, this organic um, living thing, was a mnemonic politics presently unifying those holding the anti-Marcos torch, uh, while screening out the ways in which the uprising in 1986 exposed the structures and fractures of national unity. Um, so this would be the function of um, historical media in relation to the past. Following Claudio, or historical media remediated through the, the archive and other of course forms of mediation. Um, and not only historical media, but representations of the past, films from this period, et cetera, et cetera, and how they're received today. Following Claudio, the collected interview materials were the materials that I collected with this project we're taking as a historiography of the people power narrative. The next logical step was to develop different ways of putting the video footage into tension with the past. Um, and I'll show you that footage in a second. Um, we're just at the landing page with the index. At this stage, Daniel's idea of interface metaphors, which is mentioned above, envisions interactive documentary interface design as argument and the user's interaction with it as inquiry came into play. As with the project heard, material from the interviews was considered data. And as with Anderson, the material was broken up into a database history, whose interface, of course, you, you see here. This is the um, database index. Connor Public was built in Clint and combines the interface metaphor idea with the qualitative editing strategy. The interface design uses images of archives, vinegar syndrome, afflicted film, and distressed video. And this is at an earlier, um, you cannot actually see the um, these images there in an earlier section of the documentary. Um, as metaphors to represent reification and memory loss, the visual layout resembles a dual image montage machine with, um, with archives of short video clips cut to what Florian Thalhofer calls the smallest narrative unit. Unlike Borish et al., the qualitative approach was appropriated for aesthetic purposes. Clips were taken from videotaped social history. Let me just show you a couple of clips. Um, encoded using a qualitative analysis of the interview transcripts, revealing patterns and topics that may other, not otherwise have surfaced. These codes became the, out, became the uh, script, rather, for short edits organized in dual clusters under the categories counterpublic and committed film, implying internal opposition and contradiction. Let me jump back out here. You can see the two broad categories here. Nevertheless, counterpublic's interface is not recombinant. Instead, it organizes itself around contradictions between film and video, protest and publicity and art activism, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, um, categories that you see here. Destabilizing historical accounts through montage. Each category links to anecdotes from two speakers put in tension with one another. Much like Emile D'Antonio's editing uh, strategy that makes it clear that no one witness tells the truth, that was the objective here. This technique is suturing together of interviews overtly differentiated author from subject, producing a consciousness of voice, an internal textual system. The treatment was in tension with documentary fragments D'Antonio has scavenged up from the history of television. Um, so in conclusion, in the spirit of D'Antonio, the above description of counterpublic and the description is somewhat aspirational, uh, I, 
don't claim to have achieved as sophisticated a, a kind of uh, sense of voice as, as um, in D'Antonio's films. But nevertheless, in the same spirit, this description paints a picture of documentary film in a severe state of decomposition. As such, it cannot be brought into a purely synthetic relation with academic um, research. And perhaps that was even the case for, for D'Antonio and motivated his aesthetic um, decision making. In fact, documentary film itself has gone through, and the reason why I say that is because documentary has gone through multiple historical crises, decomposed and reconstituted itself. A history not immediately ev evident to media studies, cultural memory studies, the qualitative method of analysis and database documentary practice. So of course, similar arguments have been made in, in film studies. Nichols makes this argument with respect to documentary. Um, it has been argued that insofar as documentary is part of doctoral level film and digital media theory praxis research, a working through must occur not as theory praxis, but via separate aesthetic and historical or critical investigations. Three examples have been given to show why Borsch had all instrumentalized documentary in the name of research and in so doing set aside the problem of aesthetic authorship under the guise of co-creation. While the voice of documentary is ignored by Project Heard, it is interrogated in public secret. Uh, the former assumes that documentary evidence supports its advocacy goals, while the latter iconoclastically destroys the documentary image, destabilizing its pretense towards evidence. The voice remains damaged by contradictions between art and activism and relatedly between the individual and the collective. The author's interactive documentary, Counter Public, is a rather crude approximation of public secrets. One key problem here is that the individual collective contradiction is not adequately addressed in the interface design itself. Needed would be a full transformation of documentary on the aesthetic and technical level. This would have to take into account and master database documentaries, documentary technologies, aesthetic effects, problems requiring the full collaboration of a coder or a coding team working much like in Vector's journal. Not to mention, of course, an, an engagement with experiments such as that of, of Sharon's, Sharon Daniels. Um, Broader questions such as the social relations in which the collaborative multimedia research project and the data, uh, database documentary are embedded and the relationship between the voice of documentary and its technology or evidentiary assumptions would also need to be treated. <laughs>